Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers, an unboxing video. About two weeks before Christmas, maybe three, I was contacted by a company called Makira and they manufacture desktop CNC machines and they asked if I would like one to review. It's called the Kavira Air machine, it's a CNC machine that can mill and machine metal, wood, acrylic, plastics, all sorts of things. And I said yes, who wouldn't? Uh, so they sent me one. So basically this video is going to be showing you some of its capabilities and try and make something unique uh, which is relevant to my channel. So stick around and I hope you, like me, are going to enjoy discovering what this machine can do. Okay, not only did they send me the machine, but they also sent me a package of parts that go with the machine. So it's, it's a, a wide range of tools, including a small mini lathe that attaches to the workbench. There is a laser module for doing laser engraving, some safety equipment, i.e. the glasses. Also a heck of a lot of bits for the machine to, to use to cut different materials. And I guess this is going to be a challenge to work out which ones to use for which particular material. There's a nice little toolkit here with clamps and brackets that you use to attach the workpiece to the workbench. There's even some spare parts, including this micro switch. And they've included a whole bunch of materials too. And also there's a couple of projects there that you can undertake and the instructions to do that come in a handbook that comes with the machine. But today I'm not using their material. I'm using my own so I don't waste the good stuff. This is an offcut of an old bench. What I'm going to be doing is uh, cutting a design into this piece of wood. Uh, using some different attachments. So first up, I've got to remove this fourth axis rig and uh, then I'm going to clamp this to the work surface. I'm now removing the what's called the fourth axis, like a mini lathe. It, uh, I did this for a test fit. I put it on there just to see where how it sat, but I'm not going to use it first. Instead, I'm going to do just a, a straight down horizontal uh, cutout. This is just a thin protective board to protect the work surface. Here are two corner brackets, one thick, one thin. I'm going to use the thick one. And you place these on the work surface to hold something like I am using today, which is a right angled piece of wood. So that's the starting point. So I'm placing the material in position. Uh, in the tool kit, it comes with these clamps. There's also some thin ones for thinner material. They look a bit odd, they, well I've never seen anything like them before, but they do the job and they hold it securely into place. You don't want the material to move because it could bend and snap the bit. So today's design is the Triple M logo for my channel. I've designed it previously and uploaded it to the machine. I'm now selecting it as the preferred design for this project. Right, this image on the screen represents the work area. Now, the green box is the area where the project's going to be constructed. It's too far away from the brace in the corner. So I'm going to move it now. Uh, if I didn't do that, the cutting piece would run off of the uh, area of the board and potentially break the bit. So press start and the machine is now commencing the coarse cut with the coarse bit. Removes the material quite quickly, quicker than the thinner bit anyway. Once it's finished this phase, uh, it will then prompt you to change the bit to a thinner one to do more detailed work. A lot of sawdust is created. There is an option to connect a, a vacuum source. And uh, I've done that and you can see it's quite effective at removing the wastage from the work area. Here's a close-up of the first pass. You can see it's very, very rough. But uh, the reason for having several passes is because if you used the thin tool, obviously, at the beginning, 
it would take hours and hours to get to this stage. So it just speeds things up to have the course bit first, followed by the final one. Watching this machine work, um, I get a sense that it's a really well made machine and uh, seems very robust. Okay, that's the fine pass finished. Let's have a look at it. Take it out now. I made a mistake here. I made my design too deep and I used the wood that's really overly thick for the job. So the tool has um, not finished it off as well as it should have. Uh, also, because I used a spear headed shaped tool didn't help. I should have used a parallel one, but it's all a learning experience. Bear in mind that this is actually the very first time I've used this machine. Here you can see that during the design, I made the mistake of moving the build to the bottom of the wood. I should have just left it near the top. So when I took it out of the machine, I took it up to my shed and trimmed it up on the bandsaw. Uh, overall, it's not too bad for a first attempt. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you'll be familiar with this box where I do some end shots of the finished models. It's always been a bit plain. I usually stick some pictures up there and a bit of road down there. Uh, I thought I'd do something different. Now I've got this machine and maybe construct a streetscape as a backdrop. So here's a house I designed in SketchUp and hopefully the machine should be able to make this and it should turn out pretty good. There is one problem I perceive, I'm using a soft wood here, it's Canadian pine. I've got loads and loads of it to use. As soon as it started I noticed that it's the kind of timber that forms strings rather than sawdust. I don't know whether that was going to complicate matters and interrupt the cutting. Wow, I'm really pleased. This is the very first one of these terraced house designs that I've made using this machine. It's turned out really good, so much better than I thought. So to display these pieces, I am going to paint them all. And I've got a little bit of gray wood there to represent the footpath and a black piece of wood to represent the road. And I'm just positioning them here to have a look, see how they look. So when they're all in position, I'm, I'm happy with that but I felt that it was missing something. Uh, what does an English street have? Normally it has a pub. So I figured maybe put a pub in the middle just to break up the, the scene a little bit, make it more interesting. So I designed a pub using the same program and the same techniques. And here we go, this is it now on the fine cut. You can see the actual amount of material that's coming off of each pass is really just like a, a hair's width of wood. It's quite amazing, really. So after I've finished painting the pub, it's time to put it into position, see what it looks like. So I'll move these houses aside, make space, and uh, this is amazing. This has all been done in a day. <laughs> it's uh, quite an amazing machine. I'm having great fun here, learning how to use it. It's uh, and getting some good results. Uh, I'm sure that can only get better from here on. Uh, all I need now to complete the street scene is a car. So uh, there's a guy online who scans model cars. And so I, I'm using one of his files. It's an STL file. And it's of a Nissan Skyline. Uh, quite a nice little model. And I'm going to be using the fourth axis. That was that small lathe attachment that I showed you at the beginning. So to attach it to the fourth axis, I'm going to have to modify this model and uh, put some blocks on the front and the back because otherwise the machine will cut down to the model as it is and it will just fall free from the, from the machine and get damaged or break or something. So I'm putting some extra sort of 
what would you call it, expendable wood on the back and on the front. The downside is that I'm losing probably a little bit of radiator detail and boot detail. But I mean, once again, this is an experiment. It's a learning experience. And uh, hopefully this is going to be a unique item, like a, a wooden matchbox car. Like, how many people do you know who's got one of them? So that there is the coarse cutting, which is like parallel, uh, horizontal. And there's also a fine setting. Uh, it looks solid, but it's really highly dense cut lines. It makes it look like a solid picture. But I've now got to make a selection of a block of wood. Uh, in this case, there is a... Makira supplied these blocks here. They're actually epoxy. Uh, I'm saving those because they're probably really, really good at this sort of stuff. Uh, once again, I'm using some of this material that I've made. And uh, if it uh, doesn't work, it won't, won't matter. These are 35 mil square blocks. And I've made them long enough to accommodate a car model. So to get it into the fourth axis attachment I've got to find the center of it on one end uh, I'm going to drill a very small hole in it because this is going to center the material on the the rig if I didn't do this there's a chance that when I tightened it up it would be off center and would cause vibration and possibly break the tool if it had some kind of lateral movement so I'm just widening the gap so that I can get the material into the chuck. There's kind of a coarse adjustment there. You can just turn it with your hands, take up the slack. And that's why I drilled a hole in the end so I can align that other end with it and bring it in, screw that down as tight as possible. And then there's a knurled um, adjuster there on my right hand. I'm just going to turn that up and that pushes that pointy pin into the wood just to make it extra secure and then to prevent that knurled adjuster from coming undone there's another one here that you screw in and that locks that into place up this end I've only done this hand tight so I'm going to use these tools just to give it a tweak there's no way known this thing's coming out and I can't wait to see what it turns out like I haven't shown this yet, although I have used it in the previous projects. It's a probe to, uh, every time you do a, a cut, you have to start with a probe of the area. And what it does is it uh, checks that there's clearance for the, the tool to do its job. And it also registers the height of the material. There is an option to do mul multiple probes if you're using a sheet of material that's uneven. And if you use this option, I guess it's uh, of benefit because trying to machine uneven objects, uh, there's a higher risk of breaking the bits. Talking of bits, here's a preview of the ones I'm going to be using. One's uh, a sort of arrow, arrow point there, arrow tip. The other one's fluted uh, spiral cutter. Looking at the model here, it's on the fine cut cycle. And I've noticed that there's a slight hole through the bonnet, which is not ideal. Obviously, the scan that I'm using was of a metal car and it had a very thin bonnet on it. 
Um, so I'm going to have to try and conceal that with a little bit of wood filler, I fear, at the end. And hopefully that's the only thing that I have to address. The rest of it should turn out okay, fingers crossed. I've now got to cut off the front and rear attachment points and see what I'm left with. Now that surprises me. The, the rear of that one looks like it's sort of a little bit high in the center. So don't quite know what I'm going to do there. Oops, drop that one. This is the second part of the model. It's the base. Once again, it's a scan of a metal base. So it's quite complicated. Loads and loads of little bits and pieces on there. Uh, hopefully it should just snap together real easy. So here is the base finished and uh, check it out. It's got loads of detail in there. It's even got the exhaust pipe underneath it. I'm seeing if this will snap together and I, I thought that maybe the wood had warped during machining but um, actually with a bit of pressure it fits in there quite well. I've just got to source some wheels and axles for it which I have readily at hand in my hobby room. So I've given it a light sand with some sandpaper just to make it look an ultra ultra smooth and I've filled the gap in the bonnet with a tiny amount of wood filler and I'm going to glue it together with some PVA glue clamp it overnight and then see what it's like in the morning well this is the next morning and I'm looking at it and it's glued together really well it looks great. I've also put a small amount of filler in the front where there was a gap and also in the back where my finger is. I think it looks really good. At the rear there, I just drilled in there to the two small holes to represent tail lights. So there it is, the Nissan Skyline model. And this is now ready to go on display in my diorama scene. And there it is, look at it, the first ever, to my knowledge, wooden matchbox car. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it uh, informative and interesting. So thanks again to Makira for reaching out to me and donating this uh, machine, the Carvera Air, to my channel for review. Uh, it's a fantastic machine. Um, it's been a learning experience and I've only just scraped the surface I believe. There's a lot more this machine can do including, I mean I've got to experiment with more materials as well including metal. But um, yeah look what I've made. The car, the badge, all these uh, model, this model village all made with this machine. And like I said I've only just scratched the surface. And if you're interested in obtaining one of these for yourself, if you check the description of the video there's a link there for you to go and check out the website and maybe get one for yourself. It's a great addition to my hobby room and it could be a great addition to yours. So until next time, this is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeovers saying thanks for watching and goodbye and Happy New Year!